Okay, so today we're going to go over slices and strings. So let's begin with a string that's simple like that. And now you know already you've learned how to place an integer in here. And that'll return uh, the letters, the individual letters. So in this case, uh, for example, right? If I uh, start up my paint program, uh, let's say, for example, here, if we've got um, H E L L O, that's zero, one, two, three, four. So therefore, whatever integer I place in here from 0 to 4, that's the letter in which, I'm, which will be returned here. So in other words, we, we've already learned how to access individual items in an iterable by placing an integer inside of a square, square brackets. But a slice is the ability to grab more than one integer. And there's different ways of doing slices. So for example, just like the range operation, do you remember how range, if I go, um, if I, if I do, unless I do list, you won't be able to actually see what the range is. So if I go range, let's say one comma, um, three, then that gives me one and two, right? Do you notice it doesn't go to the last one? It stops one before. We learned that with range, right? So I like you guys to follow along here in your own uh, terminal or interpreter. So slices is the same concept, except you notice here in range, we're using a comma to separate the two uh, indices. Well, with slices, we don't use a comma. We still use square brackets. But now we're going to use a full colon. So when I do this, that'll return. Now remember, if we go back to our paint program, right? it's going to return um, starting from 1, right, but not quite going up to 3. So it's going to return EL. Does that make sense there? Right? So starting at 1, but not going all the way to 3. So therefore, um, if we were to, let's say, go S1 comma or 1 full colon 4 that would return ELL. Now that means if we want to go to the last one okay we'd have to go 5 and obviously if we put 6 then that's going to give us an error oh no it doesn't give us an error that's interesting so I think this is different now. Even if we put something ridiculously big, uh, I don't think that actually works in Python 2. I think that may have changed. I can't know for sure, but that's not important. Anyways, I thought it was going to give us an error, but it doesn't, which is interesting. So um, the last number, yeah, you might also think, hmm. What if the word is something bigger, uh, super duper long? And if it's a long string, then you, you don't have to count how many there are. There's a, there's a shorthand way of doing this. So let's say I want to start from the first character, not the beginning, not, not the S, but the second one, so that's one, and it's not a comma, I can now leave off the last one, 
which just means omitting the, la the second argument after the full colon, and it gives me all the way to the end. So in other words, you don't have to know how big it is. If you leave off the second argument, it goes all the way to the end. Okay. Alternatively, you can leave off the first one as well. So let's say, for example, if I, if I wanted to go from the beginning to, uh, let's say, the fifth character, then I would put six, and then I'd get super space. So in this case, super, um, if we go back to our thing here, and if I said, super space duper space long then 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 there's 16 numbers but if i put down 6 as my second one as i've got there then it's only going to go to 5. OK? So that's what it did. Um, but my point here is that if we leave off the 0, I mean, obviously, we're saying start from the beginning. But if we leave it off, it gives us the same thing. In other words, if you omit the first argument, it starts from the beginning. On the other hand, if you omit the second argument, it goes all the way to the end. Okay? So if I did, let's say, 3, and then just got rid of the 6, it would start at 3 and then go all the way to the end. However, there is something else called a full slice. And a full slice is basically like this. And what that does is it takes the entire string. Now, why is this important? Why is this important? Well, because now, for in this case, strings are immutable. So it doesn't really make um, a lot of sense for strings. But let's say you had a different iterable that was mutable. Um, then it does it does make a difference because it actually makes a copy of so I mean okay let me give you an example let's say I said a equals apple and B equals banana okay and then I said um, C equals full slice. So if I if I just said c equals a. Okay. Now what's c? C is apple. Let's say now um, if I if I reassign c I um, see this doesn't make sense with strings. I can't actually show you the what I'm trying to do and I know you don't know what I'm trying to do. So it's a I have to. I can't use something that is immutable like strings, and because now, and I can't actually change C, uh, apple. I can't change C, because if I change C, I have to redefine it. So, but right now, A and C are kind of referring to the same object in memory, which is a string called apple or a string with the letters apple in it. But I can't change these things. Okay? However, if I did use something that I could change, so let's try it being let's try it being a little different. Let's say I said a equals and now let's make it something that I can change. Let's go 1 2 3. Now that's a list. Okay? So in other words, slices will work on yeah, let's let's fix this. Let's make it bigger. Um, let's actually let's not make it one two three. Let's make it something like a bit more random.
Okay. So 853901. So right now, if I go over here and then I go, uh, oops. Let's, uh, let's move this. Let's uh, discard this and then we'll start again. 853901. What indices do they have? It's an iterable, right? Because this is a list, right? It's a list because it has square brackets. So, so this is a list, okay? It just means that it's, it's something that can hold items in it. In this case, the items, oops, in this case, the items are um, integers, but they still have indices, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So therefore, if I was to say take the, let's say if I was to take these guys here, 853, I would say take a slice from 0 to 3, although I don't have to say 0, I could just say A from the beginning to 3, and that would give me 853. If I wanted the last guys, let's say 901, I would say, uh, I'd say 3 A And that's going to give me 901. So go to the end. But you see, now, I'm, uh, now I can show you what I was discussing earlier about changing things and why the full slice is important. Watch this. If I say now, so what's A? A is that. What if I say now B equals A? All right, so what's B? B is 853901. Ah, OK. Now what if I changed one of the items? What if I changed one of the things inside B? So I, for example, if I said uh, B0 equals, instead of it equaling 8, because right now B0 is 8, right? What if I said B0 equals 999? Now what's B? Ah. Now, can you remember what A was? Uh-oh. What happened? We not only changed B, but we seem to have also changed A. Now, what, isn't A something separate? And the answer is no, it's not. Why? Because we said B equals A. It doesn't actually make a, a new copy of A. What it does is it simply refers to A. So it's like B is an alias of, of A. So if we change, and so what, like watch this. What is A0? OK, it's 999. Let's change it. Let's change it to, it doesn't have to be 0 too. You know, like for example, I might say, what is A1? Um, A1 is 5. Okay. Well, let's change A1 from 5. That's the second digit, right? Let's change it to, you know, 11,000. Let's change it to 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Done. Now, what's A? Oh, okay. That makes sense for A. But now, what's B? Is it... Uh, I'm kind of scared. What's B? Oh my God, they're still the same. So listen, we're, we're actually, when you change one of them, doesn't matter which one you change, whether it's A or B, you're affecting both. So in essence here, you don't have two separate objects in memory. You only have one object in memory, but you have two names for it. The two names for it are, is A and B. So if you think about it from a, uh, from a perspective of like a drawing, think of it like this. Let's go discard here. 
Think of it, think of it like this. Here is the object in memory. Okay, so it's 999, uh, what was it? 53901. And now we have a, a name tag, if you will, that points to this object, A. But what we've done, okay, by saying up here where we said B equals A, now you haven't actually created anything new. All you've said is that, well, this thing called B points to the same thing. So if you change something in here, a la this one, let's say the 5 becomes 1, 1, like that, then both A and B will both be changed. It doesn't matter which one you change, you affect both because essentially you're only storing things in one location. Does that make sense? So now I'm going to show you, what if you don't want this? What if you want separate memory locations? Something that looks like this. If you have your stuff in it, and you say, okay, if A is, is this is what A is describing, then I want to create another memory location, which is the same as this, but I want to be able to change them independently. So if I change this one to like that, this one does not change. It stays the same. Do you understand? So they're separate. And this is where the full slice comes in. And, and you can only do this with things that are mutable because I can't, if this was a string, for example, I cannot change this to 111 because strings, you can't change things in a string. So it doesn't, it doesn't manifest itself with a, with a string object. So let's go back now and let me show you what I mean by this. Okay, so uh, what's A? A is this now, right? Now watch what I'm going to say. B is equal to A. Now I'm going to take a full slice. A full slice means uh, instead of saying B equals A, as I said before, a full slice now means start from the beginning, go all the way to the end, right? Because I've omitted both slice parameters, the first one and the last one. And now when I hit enter, now you'll notice that B is the same thing. Here comes the moment of truth. Let me change something, let's say, in B. B is, B0 is 999, as we expected. Okay, uh, let me make it into uh, 222 instead of 999, ready? Now what's B? Perfect, that's what I wanted for B. Now what's A, moment of truth? Oh, it's not changed like before. It's 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 independent now. They're they're not related. If you change one, you don't affect the other one. And why did this happen? Ah, it's because I took a full slice right there. So that full slice is very very important. Okay? Um and, and for this type of a situation. However, okay, let's go back to, because we were kind of originally going to learn about strings, but that's fine. We also learned about how, how a full slice is important. But if I say A equals apple, now it's a string, okay? And now if I say B equals banana, now they're both strings. Now I cannot do this example with this, and the reason why I cannot is because I can't change anything in A or B. So I can't do this, for example. I, I can't, like if I say A's, what's A0? A0 is an A for Apple. Well, watch, watch if I try to change it. Uh, let's try making it a capital A. Uh-oh. It says string object does not support item assignment. In other words, Strings are immutable. Immutable means you can't change them. So therefore, the, in, this whole concept of taking a full slice with strings, I mean, it still works. You can still copy it, but you can't, you can't have that 
behavior that I uh, displayed uh, or showed to you before because we can't change any of the items in the in the string in other words we can't change any of the letters however you might say gosh is the variable a always going to be stuck to a lowercase apple no you can change it and the way you have to change it is instead of doing this which doesn't work what I can do is I can say this now I have redefined a and so um, if for example you know what's a what's B if I say now B equals a what's B okay now let's say I want to change a to a lowercase a, uh, a if I want it to be if I want it to be a lowercase Apple I could I can't do this That's not going to work, okay? But I can do this. And so now A is lowercase apple and B is uppercase apple. And in, in essentially, I'm not changing anything. I'm redefining the whole thing. I've created a new object. See? So B points to the, to the old object, but A is, I have, I have to create a new object. So that's the way you basically change strings is by redefining them. Okay. Um. Okay. So the the next uh, topic, which we're going to go over with slices, is negative indices. So so far. Uh, you've been able to see that if we are we're taking uh, two arguments so if I go a starting let's say from one if I if I for example if I wanted to go PP from Apple I'd go start at one and go to zero one two three and so therefore that would give me the PP in Apple. Um, however, I want to show you now negative indices. So, uh, if I show it to you here, and um, kind of move this up, and I was to say Apple again, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, the negative indices work in the same way, but they would go. So if I, yeah, well, let, let's let's kind of cut it like this: negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. So essentially, you're 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 cal you're not calculating, you're counting, starting from negative one at the end, going backwards. Now, why is this important? Well. Because for any word, if I was to say, okay, where is the beginning of this word? Well, the beginning is here at zero. And now if, I, if you were to ask, well, okay, where is the end of the word? Uh, would I have to count? Zero, one, two, three. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's four. Well, no, you don't have to count because now what you know is that negative 1 is always the last character of the string. So if I was to show you that here, if I went a negative 1, that gives me the e in apple. So if I was to go obviously negative 2, right, then this would give me the l in apple. So now you might say, okay, well, why do we need another if we've already got 0 1 2 3 4 why do we need these other numbers and it's I'll tell you this it's really nice to know that the index of the last item in the in the iterable is negative 1 that's very handy okay if if you didn't know that 
then you'd have to start using things like len. So for example, if I went a and then len a, and then of course that's not going to work. I'd have to then go minus 1 because if there's five characters, then the biggest index is 4. And that'll give me the E. Okay? Um, but interestingly enough, though, I think in, in Python 3, see, yeah, see, that doesn't work because um, it's going out of bounds, string index out of range. But interestingly, it does work in slices, though. So if I went like this, that, that doesn't fail, though. Um, if I was to try this in Python 2, I, I find this odd because I'm trying to remember if this works in Python 2. Let's just test it. Uh, if I went apple and now if I went a and if I went uh, oops no let's let's just say full slice and let's go 99 uh, it works in Python 2 as well okay so going out of bounds is okay in a in a uh, slice but obviously not okay in accessing indices so this is not okay that fails so let's close Python 2. Let's go back here to Python 3. Um, now, what, what's another purpose for using these negative slices? Well, the one thing that I haven't mentioned yet is that in a regular slice, we can actually have a third argument. So if I, for example, if I went A, um, let, let's have a bigger word. Let's say A equals A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. That's good enough. Now, so we have part of the alphabet there. And if I was to go A and I, and I was to say, for example, from the beginning to the end, notice I've left off both but now I say two so what that does is it gives me every other letter so the third argument just like with range with range you know if I had something like this all right um, if I go list so you can see them all um, that gives me zero to eight but if I go um, Of course, now I have to go 0, 9, 2. And now that gives me the same thing. So we've learned this before. The third argument in range is the step, right? Well, the third argument in a slice, because I know what you're saying. I only see one number there. Yeah, but. I've left off the first two. So for example, I could say starting from zero, going until uh, the last one, which is that, that's what it is, right? Now, the other thing I could do is I could say, all right, well, um, how many letters do we have? Nine, okay? So I could say, for example, uh, Let's go to 9 here. Now, I know there isn't a 9, but it's going to go to 8. So it's going to jump every other one, right? So it'll do A, it'll do C, it'll do E, it'll do G, and it'll do I. So that's fine and dandy, but I don't actually need to specify the beginning and the end. I can leave them off, and it just assumes it's from the beginning to the end. Now, here's where the cool part comes in. Ready? I can also specify a negative indice 
or a negative step, just like I could with range. So for example, um, you remember if I went uh, range, um, let's start from nine and let's go down to, uh, let's go down to one and let's go step negative one. That's, so it goes nine to one. Well, you can do the same thing with a list, uh, sorry, with a slice. And so now I go from the beginning to the end. However, if I change the step to a negative one, now the context changes for the beginning to the end. It becomes from the end to the beginning. And therefore, when I hit it, I get the string backwards. Now, if you remember what we did with palindrome, do you remember? So if we say word equals uh, taco cat, I think was one of them, which is a palindrome, we say does w equal w full slice but going backwards. And it's true. So we've just written the palindrome uh, assignment that we did previously in one line. So that's a lot. I remember, I don't know if you remember, but I actually promised you that I would show you an easier way of doing it. And so that's it. However, I have to say, if I, if I would have just shown you the slice method without describing what's going on, I think it would have just seemed like magic. But now I think it's clear that you understand how this slice is working. So just as a, a, a further um, it, you know, practice, if I said, if I said you know, um, word equals, let's go back to, let's go back to this. And if I was to say, all right, how about taking, let's say you start from B and go to, to D. Okay, so if I went B, sorry, W slice one, full colon, okay. And now, if we count A, B, C, D, E, that's five letters. So we need six there. Uh, oops. Oh, right, because I didn't count from B. My, my bad. So, so um, no, that's not what I meant. Let's just count again. Let's use my fingers here. Ready? Uh, a, B, C, D, E. Right. So, uh, A, B, C, D, E. Starting at 1 and going to 5. A, B, C, D, E. And so F is coming here. Let's just write this out and I'll show it to you in my paint. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that means if we said, okay, so this is, we want to go from 1 to 6, we start here, and we're not going to include 6, so it would be B, C, D, E, F, which is exactly what we got. I was just miscounting before. Okay, um, therefore, what if we wanted to go from F to B, but we're going backwards? Then we would go, we'd start here, so the, so the reverse of this would be 
we'd start at 5, but now we can't go to 1 because we have to go 1 past that, so we have to go to 0. So we go 5 to 0, w, 5, 0, but the step now is going to be negative 1. And so we end up with the reverse of that string, so FEDCB, which is the reverse of what we had before. Notice that I did not leave off the second argument. I, I did put in a 0, because if I leave it off, then it doesn't just go to B, it goes all the way to A. Watch, let me show you. So if I go five, starting at 5, and I leave off the second argument, then it does go to the A. Okay? That's why, because in this case, so if I wanted to reproduce this without leaving it blank, I'd have to put, I'd have to do that. And then I get nothing. You see, so this is wrong. And the reason it's wrong is because, remember, the negative 1, right? Because you might say, oh, yeah, if I want to get to here, I have to go to negative 1, right? Because I'm, if I'm going this way on the number line, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, aha. This would work in range. So if I show you with range, if I go uh, list range, and I go, um, let's say I start at 5, and I go to negative 1, comma, negative 1. Yay, that works. That gives me 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. OK, so but it doesn't work in slices. That's right. And the reason why it doesn't work in slices is because the negative 1 has a different meaning. The negative 1 means the last character. So it's like saying, all right, start at so if we go back to this example here, why do we get nothing? It's because you're saying start at the 5 and go till negative 1, which is here. That's the negative 1 index, the very last character, right? But go backwards. Well, how can we go how can we go this way when your step is negative 1? We can't. So you get an empty set it means it means you you get nothing because if you start at five and you you have to go this way in order to get to index negative one which is the i so you can't do it because we're, our step is negative we're going in the wrong way that's why it's important to be able to specify no argument as in this example here because now it knows because of the step you're saying start at character 5 and go all the way to the beginning because our step is negative 1 you see how that works so I mean if I was to change this and I was to make this um, a step 2 or even let's say step you know, I don't need to put step one, because if I just do this, that's like saying step one. So if I put, oops, my bad, let's try that again. Yeah, so that's like saying start at five and go all the way to the end, because obviously W is this, right? So um, start at five, that means start at F here, and go all the way to the end. But we don't need to specify the 1 because the 1 is the default step. So we can simply just write uh, start at 5 and go to the end. But the cool part is, is if you want to go backwards, that's when you need your negative 1 step. That's when you need the third argument. And we can go you, we can go if, if we start here at the F, we can go to here, we can go to here, here, here. But the problem is, is that you can't put in a second argument if you want to go to here. Because you have to go one past it. So in other words, remember, when I put the zero in, right? So if I go 
uh, w, if I want to start at 5 and I want to go to 0, and I want to, oops, and I want to go negative 1, OK, that's great, but it doesn't get to the A. So just remember, if you want to get all the way to the beginning, the, the only way that I know how to do this is just to leave off that second argument, and that's when it goes to the beginning. OK? So there's no other way to do that, because if you go, if, well, if, if you go 0, you're not going to get to the beginning. And then 1 past 0, if you put negative 1, that's not going to work either. OK? Because that means the end. And we tried that uh, up here. That didn't work. So knowing how to leave, when to leave off an argument for the start or the end is important. OK? And just like we showed with, uh, if you want the whole thing going backwards, that's the, that's the reverse of the string. And if I, I'm just wondering if, uh, no, it's not reverse. Um, oh, I think I spelled that wrong. Reverse. Let's try going help string. No, let's go help str. No, str, yeah, here we go. So let's go down and let's go, is there a reverse, lower, upper? Yeah. So there's a whole bunch of really, really cool stuff you can do with strings. I think we've already gone over strip, which takes away the white space before and after. Um, there's also you know, right split and I think left split. But there's also find and reverse find. Um, there's a whole bunch of really cool things you can do with strings. But this, this class, um, so th there isn't a reverse. But this class, I, I just wanted to introduce slices to you and how to use them. And um, that's the lesson for today. See you next time.